Good morning and welcome back. Today is our last day in Austria, last day in Salzburg. We're gonna spend the whole day out. We're starting with coffee and pastry because we've not had breakfast yet. We have had coffee, but coffee and pastry at a different place, another place that Tom had on his list that's supposed to be really great coffee just around the corner. Change of plan. The place we wanted to go, while it does have nice coffee, only has cake and we need breakfast. So we're gonna go doubling back to go to the little bakery right by our flat. What'd you get for breakfast? A cheese covered pretzel. And I got a donut pretzel shaped like a pretzel. Hmm. So now we are going to go into the cemetery that I mentioned the other day, St. Sebastian's Cemetery. This one has lots and lots of skulls on the stuff, on the tombs. Ooh, sad angels. It's a lot larger than I thought it was. Based on, I know, looking at the, we're walking around the outside. It's very large inside and we found our first skull. With bat wings. So you've got these covered walkways all the way around and then center grounds and some sort of internal chapel. The birds sound wonderful, except at 7 a.m. Now they actually do sound really great. Huge penguins. Wow, look at this. Just the whole view. Yeah. Obviously we're in the mountains, but I just love that there's pine trees in here because I miss pine trees. I don't know if it was this fire or a different fire, but after a big fire mm -hmm. is when one, I think, archbishop tore down a bunch of buildings and that's where they um, then opened up all of the squares. This is a panorama of Salzburg in the 1800s. bridge that we crossed to get over to ours probably where we're staying and that's on the hillside yeah. and then the big wall that goes all the way around I mean it's not remarkably unchanged this side is quite more built up but then a lot of that is still field out there 
mountain does not look as big in this painting as it actually is. That house is still there. That one would have been the um, external shots from Sound of Music filmed right there. We've come to Dom Courtier, which I don't know anything about. It's a huge building, um, huge family tree. I know that there's really impressive state rooms, so I want to see those and something about curiosities. I'm gonna figure it out. So we're in the Dom Museum, um, checking out some of the state rooms. It's mostly gallery and you can't film in there, but there's a lot of construction going on. So you come um, upstairs and it's actually really confusing to figure out where you're supposed to go to even start the tour. But you can come outside once you started the tour. Um, you can come outside onto the terrace and the terrace overlooks, I don't know what this plaza is, but over there is Mozart Platz. Ooh, can I point? Yeah, over there is Mozart Platz, and that's Mozart's statue, and then that's the Salzburg Glockenspiel, and then you've got the dome behind us, which we'll go in there too. Um, and we're just up on a big terrace. Put the camera away for a while, because of reasons. Uh, we've come over to where the university is, because there are some statues that we need to see, but first, Tom noticed there's a really cool lion up on the side there. We just had some lunch, um, so we're feeling great. I had a very large glass of wine. Definitely took the edge off. Do you see that big bird? Mural. I wonder if that's like their big local bird. Okay, so we're looking for some art. This statue, it's like, Ant-Man. Yes, that was Lord of the Rings reference. He does look like an ant. That might be really insensitive, but fountains don't have any information, so I don't know what he actually is. <gasps> Found it. Found the thing. This is what we're here for. Literally why I came to this city. Pickle statues. This is why Tom convinced me, or this is how Tom convinced me to come here. Pickle statues, that's a joke. Obviously I also came here for the sound of music and the gnomes. Yes. But the pickle statues. Oh my god, I love them. Can we have a row of pickles leading up to our house? Yes. Salzburg Art Project, 2011, Gherkins. Trademark humor and irony, he highlights absurd social trends. Did it, saw the gherkins. I don't think that these are the only ones in the city, are they? They are. They are? Yeah. There you go. I'm a happy camper. That's Where to now, Thomas? Wow, well, you'll find out how we can stretch it. Oh, that's not very nice. I mean, I already know where we're going, but the we camera doesn't. Where are we going then? We are going to the Sound of Music Museum. Yes, we are. And then I think the Toy Museum. But first, more Sound of Music. And if we go this way, we can see the horse thing. Yes. Okay. Murals. Right here! The horse thing! Oh yeah, this is a whole fountain normally, but there's construction happening across the road, so it's closed off. Um, but this is it! Also, just to note that this, when they were filming, was more of an open square, and obviously it's quite a bit more modern now, but behind the hedges, you, there's like still a cafe where people can sit out, and that's more in line with how it was when they filmed and they did film i think there's a shot of it this way yeah. this would have been an open square but that's fine um you still have this really cool look at the ponies okay that one has a weird face <laughs> that one looks a bit better i like the guy is falling someone falling off of his pegasus and all of the cars behind me something about leopold so there you go we saw the horse murals and the fountain yeah. which is off but the murals and now, if we turn around, we will go to Sound of Music World. <laughs> I don't really know what's gonna be in there. I don't know. Sound of Music stuff? Yeah. That's where we're gonna go. Okay, this is it. Somewhat small little museum for the Sound of Music and definitely a bit about the family as well. 
Okay, I want to read all of this. So, The Sound of Music is one of the four most successful Hollywood musicals of all time, and it is the most watched film ever, but I already knew that, and I knew that it was only shown in Salzburg for three days and was a total flop in Germany. <laughs> I mean, that's not surprising. It was super Americanized, and... Um... I don't know what else I was gonna say. So in the scene when the Nazis enter Salzburg, um, realistically, they were enthusiastically welcomed by many people in Salzburg, but that is a stark contrast to what's shown in the movie. And the Salzburg city fathers, the people in charge, wanted to prevent the scene altogether to, be, to avoid giving the impression that they, Salzburgers, had been Nazis. But the filmmakers threatened to use actual newsreel footage, which would have had them shown as people welcoming the Nazis into the city. Uh, so they compromised. Uh, the residents could be hung with Nazi flags. Oh, that's the residence yeah. that we were just in. Um, the Nazi flags could be hung, but no enthusiastic reception. This is the square that we were just in. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So the exhibition continues just down some small stairs, two more rooms that outlines the history of the family. Starting with Georg, or George, Von Trapp, um, the family tree, and in the other room, some stuff about the actual Von Trapp family villa house. Because the sea made so much noise sometimes, she could shout, and I whistle, you're always here. So at this whistle, he used on us, but only to call us, not to stand in line and march. If you didn't know, they changed the names and the ages and sexes of all of the children in the movie. And one of the children was named, in real life, Hedwig. Fun fact, just so you know. At the Toy Museum, got our shoe covers. There's a room for in particular. Does it have trains? Maybe. Whole exhibition of uh, model houses. Play houses. Um, hello. This is the home that I need from now on. Princess and the Pea, or the Princess and the Pumpkin. Don't know if that one has Sleeping Beauty. It's in German, but it's the Princess and the Pea. I can show you the world. <laughs> this one's cool. What's that? Magic vessels for something. Well, they little like you spin them and see things like the lamps. Or oh dear. <laughs> oh, I love this. If I can get in. Oh. It sounds like a forest. And all these little holes have little animals in them. This is built into the cave. This is the cave. Or cliffside, that's a better word. This is built into the cliff side. Tom brought us here because he's on the lookout for one specific thing. <gasps> this is awesome. Oh yeah, all the train tracks underneath there. So this is what Tom was looking for. I hear it. What did you think that was going to be? Uh, like a museum of toys. 
What it was? Exactly what it was? Not what it was, no. I thought it was going to be like a hist, like a, a bit like a, a museum. Well, I'll tell you what, it's here. It's in the side of the cliff. And it is great if you have kids. If you have children, you want to look at old toys and you want to just play with toys for a while, that's where you should go. Yes. Lots of interactive stuff for little children. And one model railway. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be like a big, like, museum of like old toys and things. I mean, it yeah. had old toys and notes and stuff, but it was aimed towards little children playing and exploring their imagination, which is yeah. cool and great. This is meant to be a really famous shopping road or a yeah. famous shopping road within the city. And we are on the hunt for a specific shop to look in. I think it would be a lot of pass shops. Maybe we'll see some traditional stuff. Yeah. So what is this? This shop has the biggest selection of cuckoo clocks in all of Austria. Biggest selection of cuckoo clocks in all of Austria. And look at those windows. But I can't film inside. I don't know if I'm allowed to film downstairs or... But this is all antiques and outlet stuff. Look at these wardrobes. They're so intricate. And some of the cuckoo clocks went off downstairs and it was incredible. Horn of Gondor. <laughs> Old school coffee grinders. Oh, that's amazing. Really cool antique shop up here. So that is definitely worth a stop in to see some amazing cuckoo clocks. We have come to the restaurant at the Hotel Elephant, Elephant Hotel. Um, it's very expensive, so we've just come for coffee and cake. Well, I got a strudel. Tom is getting pancakes. I have a very nice, yeah, very nice smelling coffee, and Tom's got a beer. Um, we're just gonna have a little break. Oh, I was gonna get this really fancy Austrian dessert, but it's a uh, souffle and it's very expensive and it takes a really long time, so scrap that. She's gonna get out of the <laughs> Also, everything is decorated with elephants, and I'm a fan. Alright, I got apple strudel with vanilla ice cream, and Tom got pancakes. This is the elephant place we just went. Um, Unless you were going specifically to get the fancy dessert that is like fifteen ninety, I don't think you need to go there. Yeah, I agree. It was fine. But it was not that best apple strudel I've had. There you go. So there's a couple more things we want to see before we um, go back to pack and before dinner. Right now we're going to go to the Abbey. Just the Abbey. Mm -hmm. Well, they also filmed some of the set of music, but also it's the Abbey, so. Okay. Wanna go to the Abbey? Mean step time on our sore feet. Yay! Keep going. I think there's a good view up here. That's my feet. That is not bad. Oh shh. Okay, I understand why they have that reaction now. <laughs> Can you see around the corner? Just about. Yeah. I can understand their reaction now. Because <laughs> that's pretty damn good. Okay, let's talk about epic views. So there's the Abbey. And there, oh, it's so clear on top of the mountain today. I know, it would have been amazing. Well, that's interesting. Oh, that's four. Back in the four. Oh, I could have just walked over here. So being up here, we realized that that's the fortress. And we actually walked down this side of the hill here and past this gate to then get all the way down into town. And now we've hiked back up. Not the full way back up to the fortress, but like close. Decent high. Yeah, it's pretty high. And that's a spectacular view.
So if you decide to hike up this hill to get up to the fortress, if you just continue on this road around that bend, that'll take you up to the Abbey. Easy. We had no idea till now. I almost shared incorrect information. Just down here is where you can get the cable car to, or the funicular to yeah. go all the funicular to go all the way up to the fortress. Or you can walk up these stairs to walk up, or you can. Well, I don't think you can get to the fortress, but if you just continue going and follow that road up, it is a residential road, but if you follow that road up, that takes you straight up to the Abbey. Right there. Yeah, I'm going to show you two maps. This is the main Salzburg city, like the tourist uh, information people put together this map. And so this is everything we've done. First of all, you've got, we are staying right over here next to that cemetery. And then we've been crossing this bridge to hang out in the town and then if you come like if you drive this way you can go up to the mountain which is way over here but that's the sound of music house and this is where the fort is we went up to and a bunch of other things that we have done and still have yet to do something really interesting tom found this map when we went to cafe alchemy we found this one and this is a like alternative guide to salzburg which is so interesting so if we open it up we've got Oh, that's hard to see. Culture, education, art spaces, good vibes, bar, cafes, good food, shops, tattoo and piercers, sports nature, where to stay, specials, and events. So it's a really nicely designed, quite large map showing off more than just the downtown area. So again, we're staying right over here. We've been crossing this bridge, and this is the town, and then the fortress is up here. And then you can come over this way, and you've got the mountain way over here. So it shows off a bunch of places here, but then also, let's see where I can see, this area. I don't know what necessarily it's called, but this would be the more modern area of Salzburg. I mean, she says modern, but like Mozart's family residence is here. Like his birthplace is here, but the family residence is over here. So it's still definitely old, but you've got some more modern things over in this region. And we have not been checking it out too much, except for can't, like the Mirabelle Garden is over here as well. And the one road we go down, actually, this is a really cool road full of re uh, pretty awesome shops. So we, I don't know what any of these are, but I'm guessing, is our Fox dinner place marked on here? No, it's not. Some of the places they've got listed on this map, all listed on the back. Um, some of these are the things that Tom also wrote down of places to go, like Cafe Alchemy, where we got the map. Um, what else is on here that we had listed? Lots of other cool places, like Darwin's is on Tom's list to check out. Device. And device, I don't know what half of this stuff says. I have an alarm going off. So I would say if you want to check out some more modern places along with all of your historic places, I would get this map to check out some really cool places that are doing cool things. Also, they have an app. Almost everything in Salzburg has an app, which is crazy. So far, I've, they've said this before, but so far we've noticed that everyone likes an app and a QR code. So everywhere you go, most of the museums have a picture of a QR code so that you can download the app that's got um, like an audio tour to their museum, which is very cool. But uh, QR codes are not popular in the UK or the US. So we don't have a QR code reader on our phone. Someone's probably gonna tell me that the iPhone can just do that, but I don't think it can. But it is cool that most places have apps. And this map has an app, and that makes me happy. City Vision, that's what it's called, City Vision app. And that is all.